It is Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie. Welcome to the podcast for your Thursday. Um, Kate's Kate's a little bit worried about someone's child's name at the moment. This is really embarrassing. Is it that bad, is it? Well, I mean, it's it's cute. Is it? But I don't think it's what people usually name their kids after. What's to do with craving, is it? Like calling a kid ice cream. Oh, yeah. yeah, now you've just told everybody we don't need to do the story. Well, is it ice cream? The no, kid it's, called not, ice cream. it's not ice cream. It's something far more um, dividing. It's a kind of deba- really? debatable whether it's even anything tasty. You know, I just thought of the song by KD Lang, Constant Craving. Constant. That was a be- what a beautiful song. A bit late for that. Yeah, it is a bit late, mm. um, but it's and it's not in the podcast. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. All right, I'm going to set this up. So my mates and I, we play these silly stitch-up sort of games, right? And there's, uh, it's hard to explain, but gullible, gull, we, the word gull that we use, and there's a guy that we went to high school with, Jeff Hull. So we would call, if you if you stitch someone up, yep. you send a photo of Jeff Hull through, I like and it. it says gull, you've gull. been gull, it's gullible. Okay, does he know that he's the brunt of yeah, that joke? I think Hully does, yeah. Okay. Hope so. So anyway, we're still yeah. good mates with Hully. So anyway, so I we're getting some renos done on the house at the moment and my a mate of mine goes, oh, Fitz, by the way, your neighbour, who I know, has told me that someone was going through your house with a torch early in the morning, so he went over there and he scared them off. And I saw this message and I was doing something at the time, Kate, mm-hmm. so I didn't reply to it. Mm-hmm. When I do reply to it, he was then going to send a photo of Jeff Hull and it was going to be, Gully, got your beauty. Got your beauty. So this is the game that's Funny. being played. I forgot I was doing something at the time. <laughs> so I forgot about it and I didn't reply. So he didn't get to do the Jeff Hull joke. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Joke's on him. That afternoon, BJ said to me, do you know what? That's really good by Coops and the neighbour for doing that. You know what you should? That's neighbourhood watch, you should go and buy that guy a case of beer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cole is his name. Go and get Cole a case of beer and say thank you yeah. for keeping an eye out on the house. Yeah. So I went and bought a case of beer for Cole. And I think is it fair to say that the go-to gift, any thank you gift, I think everyone immediately thinks of alcohol. Yeah, you do. Yeah, It, it, is, it is a tad lazy. It is. Um, but it's it usually goes down well. Yeah, pardon the pun. The other thing is, too, it's a form of trade fits. Like, it's a currency. You know, builders use it just to go back and forth with different materials. So that's why it can be considered a very easy thank you. You did something for me, I've got something for yeah, you. Yeah, I'll give you a case of beer yeah. if you can come and do that on Saturday morning. I know even on a, on a set, for example, if your phone rings, or yep. I'm guessing in here too, it's kind of just, uh, it is yeah, a currency. Six pack, that's a six-pack. Yeah. If you drop a catch in cricket, you owe everyone a case of beer. Mm. See, this is the thing. Society's changed, I think. So anyway, I'll rock up to Cole's house. Cole, how are you, mate? I just wanted to thank you for keeping an eye out on the house. You saw the guy with the torch this morning and you scared him off. (laughs) Cole's like, what are you talking about? I didn't know this was a stitch-up. Hulled. And I said, no, Coop's told me that you've, mate... Got him. Well, thank you. And I said, here's a case of beer. That's for you. Mate, take it away. All yours. You and the missus can have a couple of beers this weekend. I really thank you for that. He goes, mate, I didn't do anything. And then I went, oh. And oh. then Cole was standing there, and he seemed a bit red in the face, and he was like... And I said, you know what, Cole? You have the case anyway. Keep an eye on my place. Neighbourhood watch. I'm just helping you out. No worries. And he sort of, as I was leaving his porch, Mm -hmm. he's holding this case of beer and he looked a bit confused went back into the car Coops rings me an hour later laughing his head off going, Cole has been sober his whole life Not only was the prank not played, you'd been hulled gulled or whatever you call it You'd been gulled gulled. gulled. Yeah, Yeah, and then forced alcohol on a poor man who's not interested See, I've done it twice as well I got midnight oil tickets from one of a very good friend of mine and I love it to death and I thought I would send her, they were these special midnight all tickets, I took the boys to it as well, I bought her a beautiful bottle of wine, mm, Kate, Yes. and she sent me back a photo with her and the wine she goes, thank you so much, I've been 10 years 
October. Awesome. Oh. Okay, so she and had then, a bit of then, then I wrote back, what's your favourite flower? <laughs> Did you really? We went to a wedding not long ago, Kate. Big Moe and Sabrina got married. It was a beautiful wedding, which was awesome. I think we spoke to you about it near Campbelltown there. Oh, yes. Uh, awesome. And none of us really knew what to get Moe. Um, I think well, you, you know, didn't the get idea, him anything. Well, I did. I got him some money. I thought you threw your jacket we, we gave him into some the air. Yes, I lost my jacket. It got stuck in the light system up the top <laughs> of the ceiling. Tommy turned up with the perfect gift um, for the wedding. Moe hasn't had a drink in six years, and it was a dry wedding. Tommy bought him um, some Russian vodka. <laughs> I don't think you can assume that people no, drink, no. want to drink, or are able oh, to drink anymore. As it turns out, we drank it under the table at the dry <laughs> wedding. So thank you, Tom, for the gift you bought for Table 23. Nothing beats a cosy winter getaway. Or escaping to a tropical paradise. If you're thinking about an early winter escape, whatif.com has just the place. Check out great accommodation deals across Australia on the What If app. What If. It's Aussie for travel. How did you guys pick your kids' names? Something we both wanted to agree on. It was something that we wanted, well, for Ted, Jack, Francesca. Two were short and I thought won't be academic, so make it easy to spell. Oh, you know what? It's so cute that mm. you're speaking as though you had a say in the children's names. I did, Kate Ritchie. <laughs> I absolutely did. It was a team effort. Oh, is Although that I what, think, that's what Lisa made you think. I think Lisa yeah. chose the third one. I think she that. had, That's yeah. A great name. I think she had the say over that one. Yeah. What about you, Phil? Well, I, I, oh, I, I had a, I had a name for a a daughter, which I really liked, which was Emmeline, which was a Ben Fold song, which I really loved that song, and I wanted to go with that. So I said to BJ, I would love Emmeline. We could call her Emmy, um, and unfortunately, we didn't end up having a daughter. So BJ came up with Houston and Lennox. They're su such cute names as well. Is, did you have a say? Well, I liked it straight away. She said, well, this is my short list. And I went, you know what? I really like Houston. And then the, with Lennox, I went, B boom, you've done it. You've Wasn't Red in the mix? Oh, uh, Redmond. For Lenny? Yeah, Redmond? actually, Redmond was in there. Really? And then what a great... That's a great... Na that's an yeah, old Red. name, yes, isn't it? Yes, it was. Red was. And then when he come out, it was like, uh, no, oh, no. He's, you're he's Huey. Not a, he's not a Redmond. No. Yeah. Yeah. What about May? Did you think of any other months? I, <laughs> it's M A E, but it's M A E, by the way. And she she had two names. Um, it was either going to be May or Annie. Mm. And I like Annie. Uh, Annie May. Uh, Annie. No, no, no. Just Annie. And then I had a feeling she may have been. Have I told you this story? No. She may have been strawberry. She was a bit strawberry blonde. That's right. And I. Just Annie the musical. Yes, I just couldn't have a red-headed child. The sun will come Annie. out tomorrow, and so so we went with May, and she was very little when she was born. So mm. May is like a, an indication of spring growth and all of that. It was just so romantic. This woman in the UK, she's divided the internet and has gone viral because she's decided to call her child after a, a pregnancy craving that she had. Right, and so her baby is going to be is called Pickle. <laughs> Pickle, yeah, which is kind of cute, and I understand Ooh, if you're going to call pickle. if you're going to call the baby pickle while the pickle's still in your tummy because it's like cute. We're you know how they something. call it peanut, or they, yes. call, they give the yeah. baby a cutesy yeah. name. You can't, it's short, born. you can't shorten pickle though, can you? Pick, pick. Oh, pick, here he is, pick, pick the, the nose. No, I think it would be a girl, wouldn't it? Let me just check here the story here. Pick cool. your bum. I mean, did you have any cravings, Kate, when you were pregnant? No, so I didn't. You, I didn't have cravings, but there are things I couldn't eat. I love pickles, by yeah, the way. Yeah, you, you were just telling us you love I'm them. Mad pickles. for a pickle. When sure. I did the HSC, I'd suck on gherkins all day long. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would. Oh, Tommy, I can keep why a can, can you why, isolate that? Why do you hate to see as well? I couldn't think of anything worse. So you studying I could, away. I could keep a gherkin in my mouth for hours. My the same God. gherkin. Is that right? What, like, the same like, gherkin. You find one good gherkin. <laughs> you have you to can just, suck on that for hours. Well, like the baseballers Stick. with chewing gum, you just have gherkin in your mouth the whole time. Yeah, only, and not even the fancy ones, not a cornishan. Wow. Shut the, up, guys. No. Kate's in her bedroom with a gherkin again. <laughs> Oh, so, anyway, so I didn't <laughs> need you, to move on very quickly. You study in there? <laughs> 
Oh. You had a gherkin in your mouth, mate. You and your... Don't your, look at me like that. Your sound effects. Pickle, though. <laughs> and yeah. then you've got to explain the name every time. I, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, when it's a different name like that, the, the explanation every time you present your name, it's just too much. No, I wouldn't get that name over the line in my family because mum was always very big on offering her... Mm. Um, Two op- cents. Opinion of the name. But, no, I didn't have... I didn't have um, cravings. There are things I couldn't eat anymore. Yeah. Like I couldn't... Uh, the smell of a charcoal chicken. Really? <laughs> and how good is a charcoal chicken? Oh, wow. The, the smell of handbag. it. Oh. Couldn't, right. couldn't handle it. Oh, vomit. Did you know what Whipper's other name was going to be? Have we told you this? Is this a joke? <laughs> no, this a no, joke? this is not oh, okay. a joke. Gherkin. So it can, my, I mean, obviously Michael was the end result, but there was another Cucumber. name. Cucumber. It came down to two names. We could. This could have been the show today. I know. What is it? It was going to be my name no, as well. No. Morgan. No, 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 no. no. Stephen was one suggestion. Stephen. Hey, Steve. Return to sender. Steve Ho. No, and the other one was Jean Paul. Are you serious? JP Whipfleet. And mum went, and no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, John. Because when, when Whippet no. talks about his friendship group growing up, there are some ripper names. Who was the one that you pr- gave us, gave to us the other day? Who was e- I talking e- about? Emma, what oh, was it, Tommy? No, no, no. Double Come barreled. On. Emily Stephen Daly. <laughs> em- em- oh, Edwina Drummond Murray. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so- so, or George hey, who's, Champion de Crepney. George, Cre- George Champion de Crepney the third. No way. <laughs> Tom, can we beep out those numbers? Has that already gone to air? It's already gone. We're All live. Right. Sorry yeah. about that, guys. Uh, you're on your own there, mate. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. This is unbelievable when I read this, but there's rumours going around that the AOC, the Australian Olympic Committee, um, is telling athletes that in Paris next year, I mean, you're going to France for the Olympics. But as soon as you compete, you have 48 hours to jump on a flight and get back home. You're not allowed, you to stick, not allowed to stick around. These poor athletes... It's meant to be a party. You train for four years. This is your opportunity. You mm-hmm. win a gold medal, you've got to be home within two days. My God. One lady who represented this great country and made... Well, she won many a gold medal is the magnificent Susie O'Neill, and she joins us now. Good morning, Susie. Suze. Oh, good morning, boys. Suze, what do you and know Kate, about this? How are you? Yeah, we're good. Is, uh, it, is this true? Yeah. It is true, but see, I don't know how to respond to this because will I respond as an 18-year-old athlete yes. or should I respond as <laughs> an official? So I can see both sides of the story. Can I, I don't want to give an opinion. Can I just say what I did? Yeah, That's okay. Yeah, what did, what you, did, you, what did you, do? you do? Well, in the first Olympics, so I went to three Olympics. The yeah. first one I was um, in Barcelona, 18. Wow. I was 18. How much I had my fun? 19th awesome. birthday there. It was fun. I did have a good time. I did party, but not like, you know, when I, when I say party, it's very innocent, yeah. you know. But um, the next two Olympics, I was with, I was with my husband. Oh. When I was married. So you weren't, I mean, when you were 18, right, and you were single and you were there and you've competed and, you know, we're all celebrating, you didn't catch the eye of any of the American basketball team or anything like that? <laughs> no, I was actually dating Matt Dunn in the swimming oh, team. Oh, were you? Remember him? Yes, yeah. I do remember Matty Dunn, the, yes. But the day after I finished swimming, competing, I broke up with him. Oh, oh see you later, mate. You broke him? Wh- why? Why did because you do that? Because I didn't want to be tied down. Because I heard also, I heard an interview the other day, and they were saying that the host nation has to pay for the Olympic Village. So the host nation is the one that says how long you're allowed to actually oh, stay there. I, I've got to get my facts right, but in my mind, the Australian Olympic team pays per athlete per night in the village. Gotcha. And right. there's And there's so many, there's only so many beds. So back when I did compete, the officials always had to leave. But um, there's a lot more athletes now in the village, and it's always a rotating. So you're saying they should be uh, bed sharing a little bit. <laughs> so what? You well, it would save on <laughs> it would save on bed. Suze, yeah. where for, for the female athletes, was there a certain country and a certain sport that everyone would have their eye on? Like, you're I asking mean, the wrong person. Honestly, <laughs> I was such a nerd. Okay, if it was just me yeah. and I was just looking at aesthetics, yeah. sports, yeah. I would pick rowing. Rowers, yeah, yeah, yeah rowers, tall, broad, amazing, and pick, so um, strong. I'd pick some swimmers, <laughs> yeah. not all swimmers. Some swimmers didn't have nice bodies, but some did. So, uh, Suze, what's the longest that you stuck around at, a, at, a, at an Olympics for? Okay, Barcelona. Yeah. So the swimming would have gone back then for 
only six days, yes. I think. And I would have stuck around for another ten. Yeah, you see, that's yeah, fun. This is what it's all about. You now we're getting country. the truth. You don't have to train anymore, Suze. It's all over. Mm, Your regime yeah. is over. You need to party. McDonald's, a <laughs> few cocktails. Actually, the McDonald's in the village is good. Oh, yeah. Like, all you can eat McDonald's. Hey, <laughs> just before you go, Suze, I mean, yeah. we've got so many amazing swimmers at the moment. Ariana oh, Titmus, yes. Emma McKeon, all of them are dominating at the moment. Is there any other new young swimmers coming through that we need to keep an eye on? Well, Molly O'Callaghan, yeah, I've Molly. Not heard of her. Yep. A lot of people haven't quite heard of her. But, yeah, she won the 100 free at Nationals just recently. She's a star. But um, who else? Oh, yeah, you know who else is really good? Yep. Um, Hayley Lewis's son, Kai Taylor. He just won the 200 free at Nationals. Hayley That's Lewis from point. the banana commercial? Yes. Yes. She was. yes. Yeah. Good memory. Make your body sing. She won the world champs in the 200 free in 1991, so just over 30 years ago. And he's just probably, he's going to qualify for the world champs this year. Well, we, lo- we love you, Suze. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Thanks, Suze. Lots of love. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. We shift our thoughts to a poor woman who was trapped on the top of a building. Um, she lives in an apartment block, and unfortunately, she got, she's got a communal roof up the top of the apartment block. I always wanted to live in one of those apartments. Cute. Reminded me of that show, Secret Life of Us. We like they had this apartment block where you just had the communal area. Hey, Friday night office drinks, workplace. It, it's whatever. not like that at all. Apartment drinks. Commun- get up here. Communal uh, roofs are a bit of a myth. <laughs> are they? It's, it's, you know what it is when you. You get it to yourself, it's awesome, but usually you have to book it in right. to get it for yourself. Okay. And there's always some there's always someone that comes up onto the roof some, and just ruins the some night. Some fat guy on a banana lounge who's yeah. been there for five hours in the sun. We stayed in a place called Air Apartments. Oh yeah, how they good were a, they? they had a rooftop. Fresh air up there. With a view of the city. And it was good. It was was good. But, yeah, at the end of the night, you'd get some young kids coming up with a few Bacardi breezes. And it's like, let's 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 go to the apartment. Um, This woman, unfortunately, as the door shut behind her, realised she was trapped on the rooftop. Um, No one to help her. She rang everyone. They were all busy. She then yelled out to other people in the apartment block, I'm stuck up here! Anybody? Got nothing, mate. Yeah. Hour past, still ringing friends, so still she's calling got family. She's got no reception. One. What? Sorry, we can't get there. No one was prepared to help her. This is called genius. She then decided to order Uber Eats. And in the instructions, she said, make your way to the top of the stairs. There's a rooftop there with a door. Just open that door, please. And by the way, I'll have a soft serve and a hamburger. So ordered Uber Eats so the driver would come and rescue her from See, the I, 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 I... That's good. That's I, thinking outside. It, well, it is. But it, I, do you know what else is also said? If you cannot find anyone in your phone mm-hmm. that can pick up their phone to help you... I'm so sorry. And Uber Eats is your only option... You don't have many mates. It's a bit tragic, isn't it? She's now hooked up with that Uber Eats driver. They've been married since. And they've got three kids. I'll have you for dessert. Oh, if you wouldn't mind. Um, yeah, that, that's... That's not bad. Just to lend out the rescue. As you're yelling yeah. like some sort of Rapunzel situation. It's almost a bit Romeo and Juliet. It's modern day, isn't it? It's not really. The saviour. Who's going to save me? It's not a rescue. There's a movie in it. If you have to wait for an Uber Eats driver to rock up with hamburger and chips. If they can make a two-hour movie about a guy stuck in a phone booth... Oh, yeah, that was a Colin Farrell movie, Terrible wasn't it? Great Terrible film. film. Tremendous yeah, film. MDG, that, that was, was a, a good bag movie. of rubbish. Yeah, he was a, a negotiator. Yeah. yeah. And he was stuck on the phone there while someone tried to blow up. Mate, what a tremendous Could you imagine, cinema. though, the, 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 the movie would start with a door shutting behind her and her quickly thinking, oh, I've forgotten something, going to go back downstairs, but realising she's stuck. Then you would get into the stories about why the people couldn't come to help her. Boring. Oh. All of a sudden, you'd see the Uber Eats app come open and I don't know she's ordered a chicken chicken macani or something with a little bit of garlic naan and then, and then she can hear the electric bike coming and bang the Uber Eats driver in slow mo with chariots of fire as he makes his way up the stairs and then they hug and she grabs the food and gets out of there alive. Why did she bother with the garlic naan? Yeah. Like if she's How just getting the garlic bite, why is she going better You've got your side chicken macani, you get your jasmine rice and then you have your beautiful jasmine garlic naan. Rice. I think you just 
order rice, mate. Mate, you don't just order rice, mate. There's lots of different types of rice. What is the difference? Well, what basma- is basmati rice? would be your lowest GI rice if you're looking in perfect for um, a risotto. Sure. Have, you ever, have you ever tried coconut rice? Coconut rice. Oaks. I've had coconut it's, rice. It's beautiful. It's is not it? bad, yeah. mate. Okay. Yeah. So they cook it's it good. with coconut milk. Yeah, oh, they do. But I'd go really brown nice. as well. I do a lot of brown rice. Tom, Tom's getting what? really angry now. Oh, sorry, this, Tom. Where this is going. You no, you forgot Aborio, guys, which is one of the best. You do go Aborio, do you? Yeah, beautiful result. Yeah. Sure, it sounds like some sort of cleanse. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Last night in Paris, Louis Vuitton found, uh, Foundation, um, they had a bit of a gig, and everyone's going, "What's oh, God, it's a pretty big setup here. It seems to be a band yeah, setup right. as well. What's going on? They might have a special performance." Jay Z comes out. No way. Doesn't do gigs anymore. Very rare to see Jay Z on the mic anymore. Geez, he's dreads along at the way. Wow. Moment. He's got a beanie on, he's dressed up to the tilt, and then he just starts performing for the crowd. <laughs> Then they were thinking, what, he's doing one song? One song, fair enough. Jay, thanks for coming. Thanks, he buddy. He stuck around for the next 45 minutes. Ooh. Then he goes into Ninjas in Paris. Have a look. Mm. Good to know for every punter out there, if you're a Jay-Z fan, you are still a chance of getting to see him play yeah. if you get an invite to a Louis Vuitton, <laughs> Vuitton event. I mean, I love a Louis Vuitton event. They're awesome. <laughs> Just so good. I'm a huge fan of the brand. Um, what's interesting, did Jay-Z get paid or did they say, hey, we can pay you in product? So oh, I, next I, I thing you know, Jay Z's <laughs> travelling with the family, and there's thirty Louis Vuitton hard suitcases. You know, you see the Louis Vuitton luggage. Yeah. Who's buying Louis Vuitton yes. luggage? I walked into a store one time. This was overseas, mm. and there was a Russian guy in there. And the Russian guy stood in the middle of the store, yeah. and his wife went around the store, quite literally, picking things off the shelf, yeah. grabbing items, and just coming back to the counter. And he stood there for a good 15 minutes while she collected things yeah. and then he just handed over the credit card. He wasn't even given an amount. He had Russian ties. Yeah, that was <laughs> dad. It was my dad at the time. Mum was pretty keen it's, for um, new LV it, gear. It's, it's, an, it's ugly, isn't it, really? No, it's, Louis Vuitton is not ugly. Oh, come oh, on. You, hey, you, had a, over here. You, you had a shot at the, um, what was the hotel? That you had a crack at? Versace. Versace yesterday oh, yes, Versace. on the show. You've had a crack at Versace. Well, the, You're having a go at Louis Vuitton. The, Who's tomorrow, mate? The original bag. You know the original, the one that it's known for, the Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah. That everyone goes for. The one that you find in Bali as well, which is exactly like the same. Is that a tote? Well, that's, let's Tom be honest, it's, it just, it's just an yeah. LV, isn't it? It's LV all over the bag. Yeah, yeah. It? It's not that. Really? Is when it? I was at the, the, the Sydney airport, the International Airport Terminal, last time I was flying out, there was a shop there with the Louis Vuitton suitcases. Who gets to the airport yeah. and then goes, I'm going to buy a suitcase I need a new now. suitcase. Like, how many suitcases <laughs> yeah, do they right. sell at the airport <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. once you know you've gone through the security <laughs> gate? Those, those old Louis Vuitton trunks, they yeah. sell for like... Eighty thousand dollars. People turn them into coffee tables, which is great. But, and you know what? And you know what? Our baggage handlers. You can imagine those guys down there going, "Oh, look at this! Oh, this is a bit." Oh. Hey, guys, just be careful with this. Just uh, guys, just... velvet gloves. <laughs> guys, glove up. And especially if it says "handle with care." Yeah, <laughs> sure, mate. No worries. Fred, uh, fragile. <laughs> You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Guys, um, always share when I've been reading a great book. Um, I lied. Uh, it's actually an audio book, um, which is great, which is my version of reading. It's called Sapiens, A Brief History of Mankind oh. by Yuval Noah Harari. I love Yuval's work. Why are you reading this? Just I'm fascinated by people. I'm fascinated by communities and I'm fascinated by influence. I think it's phenomenal. What makes people work? Why do we work? And why are we the king of the food chain? Why are we at the top? Are we, though? Yeah, we are. Don't you think there's all these other 
like universes what? and things out there, and we're just an experiment. Well, we're going with Earth. Let's okay. stick to this planet before we breach, breach, what? Reach out to the other planets, Kate. What's interesting is learning about cavemen and what was going on in their world, and why we're different to say our closest relatives, the chimpanzees. And communication is one of the biggest difference, and our ability to go into detail. So the chimp can identify with sounds to warn other chimps, whether it's, say, an eagle coming to attack or a lion. It's a different call. So what they did was they recorded the chimp's calls and then they would go into the forest, play it back, and they'd play the eagle one. There's an eagle coming and all the chimps would look to the sky. So then they would hit the lion one uh, or a tiger and all the chimps would look to the ground. So they're able to do that, but they're not able to say, hey, there's a lion coming. It's about 30 metres around the bend. It's hiding behind the tree. I saw it because I was down by the lake before. Fellas, there's a lion coming. They can't do that gear. That's why we're the top of the food chain. Anyway... This is great. This is a story about you saying you're superior. This is great because I feel like if anybody's listening right now and you've been wondering why you have control issues when it comes to food and you're you're a bit of a fatty, well, here's why. We need to delve into the hunter-gatherer world that shaped us, the world that we subconsciously still inhabit. Why, for example... Do people gorge on high-calorie food that is doing little good to their bodies? It's a puzzle why we binge on the sweetest and Mm. greasiest food we can find until we consider the eating habits of our forager forebears. In the savannas and forests they inhabited, high-calorie sweets were extremely rare and food in general was in short supply. A typical forager 30,000 years ago had access to only one type of sweet food, ripe fruit. If a Stone Age woman came across a tree groaning with figs, the most sensible thing to do was to eat as many of them as she could on the spot, before the local baboon band picked the tree bare. The instinct to gorge on high-calorie food was hardwired into our genes. Not my fault. What? Oh, what? Hey, fatties, you're off the hook. Hey, it's what? not your fault. It's just because not it tastes nice. Fault. It's evolution. Not my fault. It's not my friggin' fault. It's sensory overload. It tastes no. like the figs would have been the uh, the Hague's chocolate of the forest. Last night, when I looked into the fridge and there was half a lint bunny and there was also a Kinder Surprise bunny and I ate both of them, I couldn't stop. You and can't why because I of your ancestors. My ancestors have put me into that position. No. No, I think you ate both of them because you're sad. I couldn't control... That's another thing. I couldn't control myself because of my cavemen ancestors and a tree full of figs. Look at me now. Your fault, caveman. Hey, whip, there's your an eagle fault. coming. Hey. <laughs> Look up. Is that what it sounds like? Yeah. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life... Improve it! Just a quick one. There's been an Australian senator, Labor senator, Tasmania, Helen Polly's her name, and she said she's always on the go with politics, Kate, and she said, I love a boiled egg. So she reckons that you can use a microwave to boil an egg. I didn't know that you could do this. Do they explode? You wrap it in owl foil, which yeah. you can't put into the microwave. Then you put it into a cup or a mug with water on top, and that stops it from going crazy. Six minutes or seven minutes in the microwave, covered in our fall in water. In the shell? And that will bo- In the shell, that will boil your egg. She's Jeez. been slammed yeah, for but, it. You know what? I wasn't impressed with the last one, and we tried it on the show, Kate, which was you can actually make a tea and your eggs in the morning at the same time. So you put the eggs into your kettle. So you can yeah, but boil so- your kettle, get your tea, but you can also boil your eggs. Oh, but how many people would drop the egg yeah. into the kettle, egg and breaks. then you have egg Shells. eggs egg broken tea. into Yuck. your water? Mm-hmm. Charlene's giving us a call from West Pimble. Life hack, Charlene. Morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, there is nothing worse than when you go camping and you cannot get your fire started. So if you pack an extra pack of Doritos, keep it away from the kids, those things will start your fire instantly. It's like magic. Doritos? Are they flammable? <laughs> they are very flammable. Add a little colour to your fire and get it started so quickly. Wow. Wow. Jiffy lighters. What's on them? <laughs> Dorito fire starters. <laughs> yeah, I'd stay away 
from anything too spicy once you've been eating them, maybe. But, uh, yeah, no, they're perfect oh, for uh, getting the fire started and then you can have your marshmallows. Gee, good start. Doritos is kindling. <laughs> that like is amazing. That. Jennifer in Menai, what's your life hack? Yeah, guys. <laughs> Hi. Um, just when you're packing for holidays, pack in vacuum sealed bags. Yeah, And clever. vacuum them up, put them in. You can take as much as you want. Jennifer, out. Don't too have a much go, Jennifer. Effort. Way too much effort. Way too much effort. You know you're getting ready. You're excited for the holiday. I am not vacuum sealing every single bag that goes no, into my suitcase. Well, so I pack and then unpack. Do I you? overpack and then I go, I don't need, take three things out. Okay. It's like Coco Chanel. Yeah, take three things out now. You're exactly <laughs> like Coco Chanel. I know. Oh, when people can barely tell us apart. Fitzy went to Thailand for two weeks and took a backpack. It was extraordinary. Yeah, that's, that's all you need. One pair of Grundies, pair of shorts. No, carry on. You don't need to check in a bag these days. Oh, yes, oh, you, yeah, do. you do. You do I mean, not. because you probably don't use um, cosmetics or toiletries. That's where it gets me all the time. Yeah. And shoes. Yeah, it says. All right, let's go to Beck now in Sutherland. Life hack, Beck. What do you got? Hey guys. Um, so when you get a really, really bad headache or a migraine, I've always been told to put my hands and my feet into either a bucket or a sink with ice in it and mm-hmm. cold water, and it gets rid of your headache. Interesting, Beck. Do you know what? I've experienced a similar thing, which basically brings on pain through the hand, which is where you squeeze a nerve between your thumb and your forefinger, and it can get rid of not only back pain, but headache pain as well. Well, does it, does yeah. that tell the brain that there's pain somebody el- somewhere, somewhere else? Somewhere else. I don't really know. It works, though. It bloody hurts. Do you I know, know that much? It's- the other one as well, does the old hand, when someone's sleeping on your couch and you put their hand in warm water, do they wee themselves? Oh, does that work? Would have to encourage, wouldn't it? I, do, I don't well, know. Because they feel kind of warm uh, yeah, and they, wet. I don't know what the feeling is, but apparently there's a lot of videos yeah. up where if someone will fall asleep, they put their hand in warm water, they wake up in the morning and they've... If that's not funny if they're weighing on your couch. <laughs> no, but if it's someone else's. Mc- very funny to see it's them urinate everywhere. So funny. <laughs> Michaela in Hornsby, life hack. What you can do if you've got um, shower scum is get cheap shaving cream from the shop, yeah. spray it on, leave it for a little bit, and rinse it off. And there's minimal effort involved to get your showers looking sparkly clean. So, sh- sh- what, the sh- shaving cream kills mold? Not mould, the shower scum, like the, the yes. shampoo and stuff. And stuff. Yeah, on your shower screen. Yes, gotcha. All oh, exactly. right. Oh, do you have one of those little um, yeah. the yeah. window yeah. cleaner in your yeah. shower? Yeah. Oh, that's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just scraping it off, blood, sweat, and tears. Let's go to Christina and Beecroft Life Tech. Well, when you order McDonald's fries, um, instead of getting them to give it to you in the normal container, ask them to put it in a cup, and then you can put it in your cup holder in the car and eat them the whole way home. That is good. That is good. That would probably stop them falling out at the bottom of the bag a little bit. And the grease going everywhere. Yeah. You've been thinking, Christina, haven't you? Outstanding. Kate, this is up to you here. This is up to you. Oh, no. You make the call here. $250 to spend at Ribs and Burgers on their 10 buck burgers. What are you thinking? I think we have to go with the Doritos as fire yeah, kindling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Chris Charlene. 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 Oh, oh, beauty. That's amazing. Well done. She's completely made it up, but she's won the <laughs> prize. <laughs> we like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life improver. Kissy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.